Welcome back to the scoreboard. Like I promised you, we have with us a sharpshooter. He's a forensic ballistics expert. He's a, a member, was a member of the inaugural firearms licensing board of 2016 to 2019. A chairman of the National Gun, Gun Owners Association, Kenya, from 2016 to 2020. And he's presently the chairman of the organizing committee of the 2023 IDPA Africa Championships. Karibu sana bwana Anthony Wahome Kamuni. Thank you sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. Ken. Those are many titles for one person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anthony Kamuni will do. Anthony Kamuni will do. Yes. Very good. Thank you for joining us. Tell us, what's the uh, IDPA all about? IDPA Africa Championship. Thank you, Ken. Uh, IDPA basically stands for the International Defensive Pistol Association. And it was started in 1996. The, the feeling was that there needed to be a pistol shooting uh, event that simulated as much as possible real life scenarios. Uh, you realize when you do sports shooting uh, in Olympics, uh, th there are more equipment, uh, it, it's an equipment race in the sense that uh, the, it's equipment specifically made just for competition. But uh, IDPA came up with uh, real life scenario based uh, shooting where competitors can compete with what they carry on a daily basis okay yes all right so 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 this is this is only for pistols forgive my ignorance about uh, no problem no arms. problem no problem <laughs> no uh, idpa has a pistol it has also you know pistol carbine which is like for you it's, it's like a, a big pistol yes it's like a big pistol yes. okay all right, good. So that's it, and 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 and, and that's uh, for for the Africa region. That's What's happening right now? Uh, there there are continental competitions that uh, IDPA holds. Uh, in Africa, we have the uh, Africa Championships, and in 2020, we hosted the Africa Championships. Okay. Uh, this is the second time we are hosting the event, and uh, it has always been held in uh, South Africa. The event happening right now at a, a shooting range in Kirigiti, Kiambu, is the 17th edition. Okay. But all the 15 editions have been held in South Africa. So this is the second time it's being oh, held that Kenya is outside. Not, yes. Is it that the other countries don't have the facilities that, say, Kenya and South Africa don't have? Not or is it really. That they don't have we teams we bid or? to host the event and we were given the rights to host okay. and we gladly took it okay uh but the big the the big difference this time is that uh, we have the full support uh, for the mini from the ministry of youth affairs at the arts and sports okay. and uh, they have come in in a big way uh they have actually the biggest uh, sponsor for this event and, uh, allow me to thank them at this time especially the <laughs> cs Ababu Namamba and the ps uh, mr jonathan, jonathan. Mweke. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is primarily uh, an event uh, for the first time that uh, the government has come in in such a big way. And uh, we are expecting uh, no less than 250 shooters, not from Africa only or Kenya, but from all over the world. From it's open. We have mm -hmm. some from Europe, from, some from the US, Russia, and they will all be competing on Saturday and okay, Sunday. Okay, so, so what's, what's the difference between this? Um, this pistol shooting uh, competition mm -hmm. and the national because Kenya has a national shooting team yes and if I'm not wrong you are a member of that national shooting team well then or you are a member I, I was I yes you are yes, a member okay yes. good I've, I've followed you quite a bit so what's what's the difference this, this is not the shooting team this is these are not the people who want to qualify for the Olympics for example no no the the primary difference is uh, Olympics has its own caliber of weapons that they allow and it's it's very historical by the time when uh, shooting was me admitted to Olympics as a sport we had just come from the world wars and it was felt that you know any caliber that was used in the world war should not be allowed in the Olympics <laughs> will traumatize people <laughs> i know so the, the the difference being right now uh in the olympics uh they only allow the 0.22 caliber rifle and pistol and the air uh, weapons uh, which is a 0.177 caliber rifle and pistol they don't allow nine millimeter and that's where idpa came in and and filled the gap because most people feel 
I should be allowed to compete with what I carry on a daily basis. So, so you're saying IDPA is more of a, of a leisure, leisure not competition, really. so, sort of. It's, 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 it's really not for... It is competitive, yes, but you're competing basically at your own level. Not, not leisure. IDPA tries to simulate real-life scenarios. If you came to a, a typical IDPA competition and you right. read the scenario, yes. uh, the scenario would read something like you are at the, your backyard, uh, you've just uh, finished uh, cleaning your compound, and uh, when you turn, you notice that there is someone who has, you know, infiltrated into your compound, and they are holding a gun, and there are two more beside him. At the buzzer, what happens is that every competitor is timed using a, a sound-sensitive buzzer. So it takes your time from your first shot to your last shot. That time is added to your score on the target. That is your final score. It is trying to simulate as much as possible a real-life scenario. So you start shooting from seated position, standing position. You will shoot prone position, which is lying on the ground, as opposed to Olympics. Olympics is a bit more... You know, it's it's very, it's very, uh, let me say, modest and organized in the way mm -hmm. that shooters engage with their with their weapons. But but this is defensive. It's actually defensive. The idea is to teach people who are licensed to carry firearms mm. how to engage with their firearms. Le Capitano, uh, you know, you know, uh, you, uh, and, you and I probably carry swords. And uh, <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I, I want to understand from Anthony, you know, what does it take for one uh, to be uh, uh, a member of IDBA mm -hmm. or at least, you know, to be, because I know uh, many people would like to join this, yes. but what does it take? Because most of our viewers, I believe they want to know, how can I be able to be uh, in, in, in the team or at least be in the IDBA? Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Wilfred Bungay. It's, it's a pleasure to sit right behind, uh, right next to this great man. <laughs> you know, I've only seen him on screen. I watched him uh, win the gold medal in 2008 thank Olympics you. in <laughs> Beijing. Asante. So, thank you. Uh, IDPA, basically, you, you need first to be licensed as a firearm. Uh, and as you know, uh, the licensing regime in Kenya is that you, you have to apply and then get the license. But with, with the... With, what, what the, the National Gun Owners Association Defensive Pistol uh, Federation is trying to do at this point with the help of the government is to try and uh, demystify shooting. For the longest time, uh, rugby was considered to be an elitist sport. It was only in the big schools. The minute they demystified it, Wakapeleka Mashinani, yes. rugby has changed. And the same with athletics, and the same with all other sports where bottom-up approach was used. Yes, Allow yes. me to use that term. Yeah. And uh, what the Federation, uh, allow me to speak, I, I'm not an official of the Federation, but allow me to speak on behalf of uh, what they are trying to achieve is to try and make shooting a sport that is available to all. Mm, to bring uh, it to the grassroots. I, I, I'm sure you know that uh, schools like, uh, you know, Le Lenana School, Nairobi School, uh, they all had shooting ranges in, in the schools. So yes. the young, uh, you know, uh, students were, were allowed to shoot, participate in shooting as a sport. And, and I must say, if you look at a country like China, whenever we go to any Olympic meet, by the time we are getting to athletics, China mm -hmm. has around 140 100 gold medals. Yes, out of some sports and, and that we uh, don't even know about. Exactly. Yes. And we are there waiting for the first athletics uh, yes. event so that Kenya can... Nine days later. Correct. And I think we need to run away from the, 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 you know, the historical way of uh, attending these uh, events. And I, I don't, personally, I don't see why Kenya cannot do diving. I don't see why. We, we have China as a partner. We, 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 we have the facilities at Kasarani. Mm. We, we, we must try and run away from the traditional way of doing things. W and w w how many, you just said something, and, and, and I like what you said, although I'm just thinking. So you said that you want to demystify shooting. You yes. want to bring shooting down to the grassroots for anybody. But you, don't you fear that you're running the risk then of, of exposing or, or getting too many guns into the wrong hands? Not really. I, I think uh, the, the way to do it is have, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, and I believe this is uh, something that uh, the, the, the cabinet secretary uh, may have considered, is have an academy. 
and run events from an academy okay. point of view. Okay. Okay. So that people can come, schools can come, teach them, let them grasp what it takes to actually engage with a firearm and become a, a sports shooter. Mm. So that at the end of the day, this thing is open. Uh, you, you know, I mean, uh, and, and you know, uh, the China team to any of these athletics meets, uh, there's no one above 19. They are yes. all winning gold medals at 14, 13, 17. But here we are, uh, uh, you know, my age right now, I, I should be handing over. But again, with the licensing, that's where there is a, a small... Yeah, because then again, you, only, you don't license. Those, those youngsters don't get li Allow me Correct. to call them youngsters. Correct. They don't get licensed. Correct. But, but I guess your model of starting from the academies... Yes. Uh, La Capitano, what do you think? Yeah, in fact, this is something very important. Because, Anthony, you know, we, uh, not so long ago, we had uh, issues of form. And we were saying that, you know, to be a golf, a golfer, first and foremost, you must be a member. Just what you were, what you were mentioning, Correct. that you must be licensed to carry firearm yes. for you to be able to participate. Same thing that most people who would have loved to do uh, golf, they must be members. And you know, uh, being a, a, a member of a, a golf club is, is very expensive. expensive. And, and, and this one brings me to ask that, um, you know, do we have prospect or where do you see this country? Because as you said, Anthony, I'm one person that I love to see every sport being explored and given chances, especially for those who are young or, or those who love the sport, because Correct. this country is full of sport. Correct. Where do you see uh, the country moving forward? Especially, well, let's say, even during the, let's not even, even outside the IDPA, uh, for example, during the Olympics, because what we would love to see is Kenya being represented in every other sport. Correct. There is a lot of hope, I must say, and uh, allow me, but, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Cabinet Secretary for, 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 for Youth Affairs, uh, the Arts and Sports, has literally hit the ground running in the sense that uh, he's not wasting time. He's, he, he, he seems to be a man who knew what he wanted to do before he even got there. And for me, there is hope because they are thinking outside the box completely. Uh, they are not doing things in the usual manner. And their approach, of course, we know that the government approach to, to, to many things right now is a bottom-up approach. But the way I see it, there is hope in the sense that it, it would be good for a, a child in Kainuk mm -hmm. mm. yes. uh, to, to, to represent yeah. Kenya yes. in a shooting yeah. event exactly. yes. because they are exposed to guns already. Yes. Yes. But all I'm saying is, can you expose these children yes. to guns at an early age, but yes. from an academy point of view, mm -hmm. so that they earn even from it. Yes. Mm, yes. You know, we, uh, earlier, uh, we were having a conversation with uh, Le Capitano here, and we were talking about a 19-year-old who's uh, just very nearly broke Usain Bolt's uh, record. Eh? And, and uh, you know, what, what are the chances? How, how soon do we expect uh, this academy to be established in this country? What do you think is going to be the intake? Because, and, and I, I say this with a clean heart, it looks like this is, this is almost an elitist sport. Uh, true, <laughs> it's true, very elitist. I, I must say, it's true. You know, for the longest time also, you know, uh, a, a lot of sports have started there. You know, they were mm. only played in big schools. Mm. You, you would only interact with certain sports if you went with certain schools. Mm. But I must say, you know, uh, th there is talk of an academy yes. uh, coming up. And, you know, as you know, government has the facilities. Government has uh, the land. In Kasarani, for example. It, incidentally, they have that. Uh, is a sports, the Kenya Academy of Sports. Correct. Yeah? Correct. That's, that's, yeah, that's, and, that's, and, and, uh, and I believe, you know, probably they, will, they are going to have most of the sports, you know, outside the, the tradition uh, yes. of what we always have. Because Correct. remember that, uh, as, as Anthony said, you know, for for one to be able to uh, to be a, sharp, a sharpshooter, you must have practice. Yes. And you can imagine that, you know, I mean, uh, first and foremost, uh, carrying firearms or whatever it is in this country, it is illegal. Mm -hmm. Okay? Unless and, you're licensed, uh, and, and, and I think, you know, to start to have an academy. Uh, but another another thing that I need to understand, can it be, I, I like when you use machinani. Do you think that in the near future, there is a possibility that we can have inter-county, you know, uh, shooting events so that ah, yes. people can be able to progress yes. and yes. come all the way to national. By all means, by all means, and I say, why not? Because mm. uh, the approach is what matters, in my opinion. You know, uh, you can always organize these events in such a way that you reach to the last of the last, so that a person does not have to know someone.
does yes. not have to be yes. connected, does not have to be in a certain privileged school or privileged status for them to participate in an event what, like So this is, this is uh, one of those, uh, it's called a circuit? Yeah, that's a course of fire. A course of fire. Uh -huh. That's a course of fire, basically, and uh, you know, you have people shooting uh, inside the course of fire. Yes. Uh, it, it's a maze, basically, and you have to sort the problem as you go through it. Mm. And uh, you know, there are many targets, you have, uh, uh, but, but this is, uh, it looks like an IPSIC event, mm. uh, IPSC, okay. which is close to IDPA, but okay. a, a few rules are different. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look at this, uh, Anthony, and um, it looks like more of, um, you know, I would say those who are in the discipline forces, uh, is it possible that you can have a civilian doing very well in this? Yes, we have very many civilians. In fact, uh, the majority of the shooters are civilians. And uh, very many people have taken up the sport. Uh, of course, you have to invest time. You have to invest a lot in uh, practicing, but also your coaching uh, principles and your coaching approach is very important because uh, th that's what we lack also. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you have a coach, if you have a mentor, if you have someone who can take you through. When we started, we didn't have coaches. Mm. But what we've done gradually is we have made it easier and easier for people who come in to adopt to the game in a faster manner. Anthony, before we run out of time and before I ask you about the Olympics, we have these trophies in front of us. Could you please explain what they are? <laughs> oh, this is, these are different trophies I won in uh, different times. Uh, this one, I think, was last year. I won uh, at the Chairman's Cup, which is uh, one of the biggest calendar events. Okay. It's an this, IDPA shoot. It's an IDPA shoot. Okay. This I won last year. Uh, no, 2021. Mm -hmm. At the last Africa Championships. In I South came Africa. first. No, it was held here. We hosted it. Oh, sorry, 2021 was, was yes. in Kenya, right? Yes. Right. Okay. I came first in my category, which is expert uh, ESP division. Expert. Yes. Okay. This one is a bit older. Uh, this I well, I won. Uh, it was a friends of Kiambu County shoot. One of the big events we also had. A quick one, Anthony. Yes. How long have you been doing this? I have. I've been shooting since 2001. Uh -huh. 22 years. 22 Actually, years. were you a policeman at some point? Yes, I was. I, 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 so. I, I after after <laughs> university, <laughs> after university, I joined uh, the Kenya Police. Mm -hmm. I went to Kiganjo for nine months. All right. And I was posted to DCI. Mm -hmm. I joined the forensic Which ballistics was department. CID, CID. CID at the time. Yes, yes, I joined the forensic ballistics department. Yeah. I was trained as a forensic ballistics expert, which yes. I am to yes. date. Yes. And uh, then I joined the UN Security. The UN? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was there until 2016. I left and now I'm running my own company. So at the UN, that's when you started You started this? No. I started in DCI. Oh, 2001. 2001. Because oh. I joined Kiganju in 1998. Okay. Yes. All right. One, one more, uh, Ken. Yes. Uh, you know, this country has been hosting a number of events. What are the prospects? Uh, Kenya hosting a major event in terms of shooting because I, I I believe you know most of our viewers would like to know that can Kenya have facilities that can be able to host uh, an event in terms of shooting? Oh yes, you know at the Kirigiti Shooting Range, which is a home of shooting uh, uh, for the National Gun Owners Association, mm -hmm. we have a state of the art uh, shooting range which has been built to international standards mm -hmm. and which is hosting this event wow. and Do this event has been running from 4th it ends on the 9th and I'm inviting everyone to come uh, you know you can buy your tickets on sunny.com and come and watch for the first time the event is being open for members of the public to come and watch wow. so they can come and watch and of course the idea is to bring in more and more people to be acquainted with what happens in a shooting event so they should come. All of them should come and watch. It's a nice way to spend uh, your Easter as well yes. with family. Yeah. And uh, there will also be, a, you know, a, a Shabaha village mm. uh, where people can interact with. You can interact with the shooters from mm. here and from abroad. And uh, by all means, they one, one last question, Anthony, yes. because we're running short of time. Where are we in terms of uh, qualifying for the Olympics? Ask Kenya. Let me say we have not reached there as a country because one, we lack facilities. And two, we do not have the requisite coaching skills. And uh, for me, that's not a big problem because partners, we have very many partners who are already there. China is our, one of our biggest partners. They, they built Kasarani for us. 
And, you know, approaching the same partner to tell them, listen, we need an Olympic uh, standard, uh, standard uh, shooting, shooting range. range. Yes. Uh, and we need one, two, the equipment, yes. and three, the skill. The skills, yeah. We need you to bring coaches here who can stay with us for five years. Yeah. But uh, you foot the bill. They'll do it. That's very good. Thank you. And, and, and um, I, I, I tell you, the government can do that. We've yes. had uh, the CS here as well, and we've had him. He's got a lot of vigor. Correct. Push him. He will do it for you. Good. Quickly, do you support any team in England? What, what's your football team? Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea Dumbo. Yeah, Chelsea Dumbo. We have some <laughs> matches this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think the early kickoff on Saturday is uh, Man United versus Everton. Yes. Uh, then we have Aston Villa, Nottingham, Brentford, Newcastle, Fulham, West Ham, and your beloved Chelsea is away at Wolves. Yes. Okay. At five o'clock, Spurs will be at Brighton. Leicester host Bournemouth. Southampton host Man City. Sunday is Leeds Crystal Palace. The big one, Liverpool versus Arsenal. Do you think Arsenal has a chance of winning the Premier League? He's an Arsenal supporter. Absolutely. So I'm not Arsenal. <laughs> well, let me just say anything is possible. Anything is possible, anything is possible at this mm. point. Uh, they, they and especially, I mean, from a sportsman point of view, yes. uh, Ken, you know, to sit here with Anthony, you know, he understands that sometimes maybe you, you go to a competition, you think that you are the best, and then you don't perform. Correct. Sometimes you go out there, you are not at your best, but then you perform. Yes. Yeah. So you realize that um, this weekend, if you don't beat Liverpool, you will be in a lot of trouble. Well, like because I, you are likely to then lose to Man City, and that will be six points, and there will be one point ahead of you. Assuming everyone wins all their matches, it means you will finish second, and Man City will win the championship. But can wait but until it is done. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I can tell you. Thank you. Yes. I hear you. And on the local scene, we have... Uh, oh, yeah, we had uh, the Starlets were to play Albania next week on Tuesday. But that was cancelled. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't understand why. Well, it, it was cancelled because they are talking about uh, log logistical challenges. Mm. And, and I think, you know, uh, Ken, football was coming back, you know, after Kenya being banned for a very long time. And I think mm. it's so shameful that we are not going to have, uh, you know, Starlet going to play in... Uh, with, with the team that was, was supposed to be playing. Yes. Uh, but of course, you know, I mean, there is nothing we can do. Uh, already now, they have said that they will be waiting for the next uh, time that they can be able to get uh, for them to be able to play again. But I was hoping that they were I, going I to I think play. there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, psych and um, for this. You remember Haram the Stars the, the other week played against uh, Iran and we lost by those two contentious goals. But anyway. well, which were, you know, for Iran, at least, uh, you remember what my my prediction was? I thought maybe it would be seven. Yeah, you, you are, you but are, I think you Kenya was did well. very bad for your country. Well, but of course, you know, they did very well and unhappy. But they, they did well, I think. Anyway, a loss is a loss, whether it's small or big. Uh, on the local scene, we have uh, some matches going as well. I think we have uh, Talanta hosting Wazito, uh, Zoya hosting Bitco. Gore is playing Sharks and, and, and police. Oh, here we go. Here we are. Um, uh, yeah, Talenda okay. is going to beat uh, yeah. Wazito for Antony, Interpolis. Do you support Matare? any local team? What, what do you think? Police, you know. Support, uh, support, I support police. police. Support. No, we were just saying police is not doing very well. But yeah. on Sunday they are playing AFC Leopards. But they, they, they lost. Did they lose? Yes. They lost. Uh, no, they, they drew. drew. They drew, they drew, they drew against yes. Wazito yesterday. And, and, and they are now uh, sixth from second. They, they, they've seen a slight slump, but because again, I, football. Anthony, you know, I was your biggest supporter here because I, w I was looking at the police the way they were doing very well, you know, because for a very long time, you know, there was position four yes. and also they were in top form. Yes. But I don't know what is happening exactly, you know, that they have been able to go behind. But of course, you know, I mean, we still hope okay. that uh, they can be able to we do it. We pray so. We pray so. <laughs> very good. We wait and see. Yeah. Uh, Le Capitano, your final word? Uh, my final word is that, um, you know, just having Anthony here, um, and, and, and me as an advocate of every sport in this country, you know, I'm happy that I, I think our viewers have had a lot of information, especially, you know, when it comes to shooting. And I think there's a lot of knowledge uh, that we can be able, maybe in the near future, get someone from Turkana, uh, Nandi, or anywhere to be able to be in this uh, kind of championships and maybe even, and hopefully, represent the country during the Olympics. Thank you. Anthony? Uh, the, the plan for Easter is uh, the, four, the, the 2023 IDP Africa Championships. So all roads lead to Kirigiti. Karibuni sana, come and watch uh, 
uh, top of the art uh, shooting competition open for the to the public for the first time thank you uh, this weekend uh, there is a lot of sports you can be at Kirigiti you can be at Nyawi Stadium for those who love golf they can be at Nairobi Royal along Gong Road that's where all the action will be whatever you do make sure it's a safe sport that you choose thank you once again for being with us we'll see you in a week's time on Thursday next week good evening